Hello everyone and welcome to this week's UXP Quick Tip Tutorial, in fact the first UXP Quick Tip Tutorial I'll be making. Today's tutorial is about Spectrum UXP, which is basically one of the integrated design libraries um, that is built in to UXP plugins. With this you can basically use a whole bunch of pre-built elements that are guaranteed to be compatible and have the same look as Adobe programs and which is highly encouraged for upcoming UXP plugins. And all of these elements are super simple, you simply create it the same way you would an HTML element and it gives you all of this access for customization and there's a full guide on every single element and everything you could ever want to change. So today we're going to be going over all of this, how you can access it, how to understand it and create them. Before we get started with this video, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel and down in the description. You can follow us on GitHub for coding updates as well as uh, Instagram for other live updates and down there in the description, uh, you'll also see the link to this design reference. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and a whole bunch more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube and get cool perks, link for that is in the description down below. You can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, and some of those perks include things like Discord status, weekly VIP streams, code in advance, and much more. And you can also check out the links in the description uh, for AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to check out some of the other products and things I'm working on. So if you're not already familiar, UXP plugins are the next step forward after CEP extensions, and eventually, all Adobe apps will be upgraded to this and all the previous stuff will be gone and hopefully this transition will happen slowly so there are no surprises because the functionality for UXP is quite slow and buggy sometimes. But then on the design side of things, things are already quite along and have uh, something called Spectrum UXP. You might have seen Spectrum before uh, because there are Spectrum CSS and other Spectrum things that people have used before. And Spectrum UXP is built in automatically to UXP. So when you make a UXP plugin, you don't need to include any special libraries or files. All of this is going to work out of the box. Spectrum UXP is designed to feel familiar to anyone who's used the HTML5 web components feature. This allows UXP to expose a consistent yet custom user interface without requiring a specific framework such as React or Vue, uh, while still encapsulating the implementation details. Um, now, this is pretty much true. Uh, I, from what I've heard, Adobe wants to use UXP as a way to sort of standardize, but also offer customization of all your UI elements, because with CEP extensions, the design from one extension to the next can be completely different. They could be using completely different libraries. And in terms of compatibility on every user's computer, this can cause issues and have uh, other problems. And it also kind of furnishes a uniform environment with some customization, so a lot of the plugins might look similar. The version of Spectrum UXP shipping with UXP 4.1 is influenced by, but not wholly compatible uh, with the Spectrum web components and Spectrum design system. You can do more reading on these. It has a full um, list of all of the Spectrum web components, which you can use in your websites and other things, and also just a general overview of Adobe's design system, Spectrum. In order to get started, it's super simple. You can just start using the Spectrum UXP controls as you would any other HTML tag. You don't need to include any special libraries, blah, 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 as I said. So to create an, a button or a Spectrum button, um, you can kind of infer this by just uh, any tag you want to make Spectrum, start it with SP dash the normal name. Uh, in this case, SP button. If we want to actually see these displayed, we'll go over to the uh, user interface. And this will give us a full list of all the UI elements we have. We have action buttons, buttons, checkbox, dividers, drop downs, icons, links, menus, menu items, progress bars, radios, radio groups, sliders, text fields, and text areas. And a whole lot of these are things you would typically use um, with any normal HTML or extension development. But now you'll have access to all of these really nice looking and really customizable UI elements for your UXP plugin. And this will also give you a full list, very detailed of how you can adjust some of the properties, for example, min, max, and values of a slider. Um, if it has variance, you can even control things like uh, the color and the special types. Like sometimes there's a special type of drop down with an alert. Um, you can change the size variation quite easily with UXP elements. And uh, everything is really customizable despite being kind of a similar style to what Adobe already uses. If you do recognize a lot of these things, 
these are used in a lot of already existing uh, windows and applications that Adobe creates. Um, and you probably recognize a lot of these variations of like the buttons and stuff as well, because these are used quite extensively already in the Adobe ecosystem. And I think they're really just trying to push to add these into there. So really all you have to do is copy and paste code and modify it as you wish based on what these instructions give you. And it's really just a simple HTML tag for all of your uh, spectrum elements. One quick note regarding buttons, you do want to definitely use SP buttons. And I would highly recommend to use SP everything when you can because if you try and create a normal button HTML element for your UXP plugin, you'll be sorely disappointed to find that it doesn't work because not everything is supported. Uh, next week's tutorial, I'm gonna be going over some of these support issues that UXP currently faces, which might change in the future, but just a quick tip, use SP buttons and SP when possible because this is what Adobe's pushing for and it's easy and looks good. But that's gonna do it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can uh, follow us on GitHub for coding updates. Check out the link to all of this guide. Um, and you can also follow us down there on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, a link for that is in the description. You can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, which comes with cool perks like badges, Discord status, uh, VIP streams, and much more. And make sure you check out the links in the description for AE Scripts, Adobe Exchange, and Gumroad to check out some of the other products and tools I'm working on. Thanks again for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.